Well, we're finding that out. Yeah. Is, is, is we're finding that out that everyone has their own struggles. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, granted, some people are like, it. it's tough to look at, like, a quadriplegic that made the Olympic team for weightlifting somehow and be like, well, yeah, but my dad didn't hug me a lot. Like, <laughs> and be like, oh, it's the same, right? Like, yeah. it's the same struggle. No, no, not quite. Yeah. But everyone does have their own thing, whatever that is. Yeah, I think that's where it comes. From. What's what's your thing? What's Ron my Funches? thing? I think people know my thing. <laughs> my whole act, I tell you my thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, an easier said than done thing, by the way. Like I was just talking to somebody about this the other day about getting like really honest on stage, and I don't feel like I'm truly at that point yet. And yeah. I'm like, when does that click? You know, like I think it takes experience and more and more and more time. I'm not there yet either. That's the thing I've been talking about. It's one of the reasons why I'm, I've been. I started going to therapy was mm -hmm. not only that I thought it would really help me and help my ability to be in longer term relationships and my, but I thought it would be, it would help me with my ability when I, cause, um, I hate when other people critique me, you know, I hate critics yeah. and stuff, yeah. but, but you know, I'll watch my own special and I'll come at it with the eyes of like, what do I see are the faults here? What do I see that I could do better? And when I look at my my special, I go, it's pretty, it's funny, it me, but it's like it's a little surface level me. Sure. Like it's a little like like oh here's my favorite TV shows, here's my favorite movies, yeah. and it's like and that's fun and that's still I don't mind talking about that because that's what I wanted to talk about. And it's yeah. a good way to intro you yes for your first special for a lot of people. Yeah, right? yeah, that's why I felt because yeah. again when I've heard other people critique it, they're like they they have the same criticism. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's kind of like in a way that I don't think they understand where right. I'm like yeah I can't I couldn't do that because you don't know me yeah and you can't I'm introduce yourself yet. at a party and go like hi my son has autism yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's you yeah. know, it, it, it's funny. I mean, it's funny you say that, but we we've all met people after shows that within the ten second meet and greet, uh, drop one of those bombs on you where they're like, where for me they like come up and go, wow, it's so crazy that uh, you have dwarfism because this is my mother who's with me and she's got maybe a week left to live. You're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for letting her laugh. I'm like, you're, yeah, you're not welcome. the same thing. <laughs> yeah, like I'm, it, it just kind of yeah that to unload that much. On someone with yeah, without that saying quickly. hi. <laughs> yeah, it's like maybe let's talk sports for like a, like a, a minute yeah. and a half. Well, it's like it's the classic Milani joke where it's just like, "Hello, I got AIDS. I'm gay. <laughs> I'm new in town." <laughs> exactly, and, and some people do that. So it, it, it's it, it's really mature of you to be able to recognize that and go like, "Yeah, I can't for my first one just be like, here's all my shit." Yeah, you know, like, hey, let's get to know. Let, let, let's get let's have the audience get to know you first. And yeah. you're and you're such a nice and welcoming person. That, yeah, that even if you were to announce that oh your son's autism as a par at a party, I feel like that would be welcomed with open arms. <laughs> <laughs> like there's certain people that can say certain things right out of the gate and it's gonna not be weird. And I feel like you have that gift. Yeah, that is a gift. I mean probably comes with my voice and mm -hmm. my general demeanor. Yeah, you're yeah, you're affable. But that's also a thing I wanna be able to play with and push more. Sure. You yeah. know? And so that's where I'm looking at where like my whole thing, like we talk about in therapy and my writing now as I'm trying to do things is like just go deeper, you know? Like yeah. just get into less of the like what and where, who, when and more more of the why. Sure. You know? How many times did you watch Giggle Fit? Which by the way uh, I've seen it twice, three times if you count being there live for the taping. Um, amazing. Comedy Central's highest rated, what was it? Highest rated special on Comedy Central in the last two years. And I'm not talking about like by a little. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about by well, a whole and, lot. And this, this, this really speaks to who you are, Ron, because uh, some people have a special and you see a couple of comics tweeted out and that, that are in their close circle. But when your special is coming out, Giggle Fit, which I'm sure you could watch on the Comedy Central app if you watch hate. it on that app, yep. and get it on iTunes, on Google Play. If you listen to this on your phone, you can find it. <laughs> there you go. I promise you. You just gotta but, pay five bucks. Yep, that's it. But like when you were when, when you were doing the promo for the special, every comic was like, w "Watch this. Go see Ron, like talk, like watch Ron's special." That had to make you feel really good when, like, it seemed like every comic, every pro wrestler, like, the the, 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 the two worlds that you seem to love the most, uh, pretty much everyone in those worlds was like, hey, this is a, this is a good special. Yeah, that, that was the, the best, was really 
um because you know i'm still gonna plan that because i know the deal when everybody has a special album or whatever we right. we all help each other if we yeah. can you know absolutely and but sometimes people have to remind you and send you a little tweet yeah. out or, or a little mm-hmm. form email you know we all get them yep. you know and i was preparing mine because i was like <laughs> i want to i need help please yeah. do you, you have know? any problem following up with pe- like if there's somebody that's got a, a substantial amount of followers and you're like this person i know no problem will do this for me but I've asked them a few times and I know it might not be at the top of their list. Like, do you have any sort of, you know, uh, trepidations about like following up a third time to be like, yo, yeah, Chris D'Elia, send that fucking tweet. Well, Chris, Chris I mean, you need to just see some people, you know, yes. right. And so like Chris was like, when I asked him first time and it took him a day, I'm like, that's him. Yeah. And so then yeah. I'm like, let me just ask him a second time. Of course. And he'll send it right yeah. out. And that's exactly what yeah, happened. Yeah. But I don't really do it like th- three times, you know, like it, there's a couple people who, and, and, and no, I, no fault. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. I just like, I understand you're probably busy doing your own thing, but it's like, I'm aware, I've become aware of like, oh, when you asked me for something that was a clear favor, I did it for you. Yeah. And then you, you did not for me. Yeah. And that, and you remember that stuff. You remember yeah. it, but I also try to go like, that's not going to change me. I'll still like, I'll still promote your shit. Good for you. Like yeah. I want to, I, especially now, you know, the, the weeks, you know, with, with not just Brody, but with Kevin and, and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. It's like the Lucas brothers, I think said it best in a post they had on Instagram where it's just like, you know, we, like we spent all our time leaving the real world of this rat race and competitiveness to go do art and be fun and have fun. And then when we become good at it, we're kind of forced back into it Yeah, right? where we're competing with each other business. again. Yeah. And, and we got this and who, what money are you getting? And this person's right. making more on this. And yeah. I want to move up the call sheet and all that shit, you know, and I get caught up in that a hundred percent, hundred percent. No, I'm talking about myself. Yeah. And I'm like learning to just remember, like, I mean, I said it on my, my own podcast was just like when Brody was talking about en- enjoy it, it's like, that's for real. Like, you know, yeah. you got to have fun. And this is the fun. Hanging out with you guys is the fun because you're fucking amazing. You're hilarious. And I shouldn't be jealous. And I shouldn't be threatened by it. I should celebrate it. And yeah. sometimes I have been. And so I, I, I'm trying to shed that right now. And it's I think it'll be a process. But yeah. it's just something I'm like, I'm really trying to enjoy comedy and the fact that I get to do this for a living. And you do have to take those moments to where you go, yes, maybe I'm not selling as many tickets as so-and-so or I'm not higher than so-and-so on a call sheet or I don't have my own show and, so, and someone else does. But then you have to stop for a second and go, but I still get to do this. Yeah, there's like, a laundry list of things you could gripe about daily yeah. to start your day if you truly wanted to just, you know, um, jump into a pool of shit and try to swim out without any hand. What's the saying? I don't know. What is the fucking? <laughs> I didn't know that was yeah. a saying. Yeah. I jump thought into you a pool were making shit. I mean, this is this is Adam Ray writes Hallmark cards <laughs> right here. You guys all see um, that. Um, hey. Um, no, you know what I was going on. Guy with? at the CVS, do you have any jumping in pool of shit cards? <laughs> it's like, Dude, oh, right at, this way. At my Hallmark, you would. At the Adam Ray Hallmark <laughs> land of new new wave cards. No, the saying I think is going up shit creek without a paddle. Yeah. And I was trying to do a version of that. But yeah, there. Um, it takes a minute to adjust, and I think we can all attest to this. Like, you know, how deep you get into this business to where you can um, put yourself on this like positive path of of you know every day like and and not to and taking those like moments of jealousy and and competitiveness and you know fueling your own fire with it and not getting caught up in um you know really just focusing on stuff that's not helping you i think pat and he he said it best um in a tweet i saw years ago where he was just like jealousy is just a map of where you want to be and so like that's what i i try to do when i feel those like tinges of jealousy and, and instead of be like oh fuck them so i'm like i go like what can i learn from them like what can what are they doing that maybe i'm not doing i've yeah. learned from a lot of people yeah. like that you know chris being one in particular where um before i worked with him on und- undateable um i was like oh people like his stuff and he's like just like he's just he's just real cocky and confident and that's why people were feeling it i'm like yeah that's why people are feeling it because mm-hmm. he's loving it He's yeah. having a good time. At the time, I was going through my sets like, 
I'm robbing a bank. Like, please like me. And like, you mm-hmm. know, like, hopefully I'll get away with this. And I got to wow. be like, either way, you would be the I'm nicest, the shit. You, you, you would be the nicest bank robber. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, way. Please like, give it, me your money. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, ah, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Just take it. It's oh, fine. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my son's autistic. Can I just yeah. get a little Can bit of... Can we have some of your money, please? <laughs> But yeah, that 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 it is very valuable that you can look at people and rather than try to break them down to come back down to where you are, you go like, oh, how can I get there? What yeah. did they what did they do to get there? Yeah, I oh, should yeah. do those things too, or do a version of that that works for me. That, yeah, that 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 works for me. Uh, yeah, what a brilliant advantage that is for all of us to see people do like. I mean, and again, everyone's path is different, and there's no blueprint for any of this. Like just because. Chris makes a video of Eminem doesn't mean that if we do one, Eminem will also retweet us. Listen, I man. think I'm at the level of like, if I posted one of like, you know, Sean Mullins, you know, <laughs> does anybody remember? I mean, <laughs> Rockabye, yeah, Rockabye, yeah, yeah. everything's and, good. And he and would probably th- retweet, me, retweet me. Everyone thought the damn song was called Rockabye. No, it's called Lullaby. Yep. And, you, and that's why Sean Mullins is a son of a bitch. Because we had us all be like, oh, that damn Rockabye song. No, it's called Lullaby. Yeah, and by the way, if you're Sean Mullins, and you are, because you're listening to this, um, <laughs> just change the name of the song. Yeah. It's like when, if I... Or some, put it in parentheses, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Lullaby. Don't rockabye. make us the asshole. Yeah. We like your song already. Yeah. The jo- you won. Now you're going to try to... But it's like one time at the Grove, I thought I saw Phil Collins. And I went up to this guy, and I was like, oh my God, Phil Collins. And I usually have a great facial memory of like just being able to recognize and i was like i don't usually do this but i'm a huge fan and, and i was like phil you are the goddamn man and he's like my name's alan and i was like well now we're both upset <laughs> <laughs> you could have just pretended to be him sang one verse yeah of susu studio and then like you know that's so fun but, but <laughs> that you were that confident <laughs> i was well <laughs> also I, to be fair at, adam really wants everyone fan. to be phil collins so bad that he just pretty much walks up to every white guy with a receding hairline he goes, Phil Collins? <laughs> yeah. At some point, it's going to pay off. Yeah, yeah. One guy will be Phil. One guy's going to be like, yeah, it's Phil Collins. I, yeah. Is that a Phil Collins impression? Was that What accent was that? I was trying to, like, as I was doing it, I was like, is Phil Collins British? So I, like, did, like, <laughs> half British, like, half, like, I'm going to pull it back a little bit. <laughs> so I was like, oh, yeah, thank you very much. Like, I, I don't know what the hell Phil Collins sounds like. Uh, Ron, can you do voices? No, or, not at all. I have my voice. I do a lot of voice. You I do, just came from a voice. I know you did. You do so much voiceover, and you have a brilliant set of pipes for so many characters. But I'm always curious. I'm like, I wonder if, like, what the Ron, like, the Scottish or the British version of Ron would be. No, there's no, no. I'm horrible at impressions. I think well, you my don't need... voice is so prominent, yeah. and I have mm-hmm. the lisp, and all Nobody that. wants anything but this. Well, I try. My son does. He keeps trying. He makes me do, um, He, you know, he's a teenager yep. right now, mm-hmm. and he's doing a little t- teenage uh, rebellion. His rebellion right now is that he keeps, like, changing his name to different cartoon characters that he enjoys, and Whoa. then changing all our names to oh. match that universe. Um, so I love that. He Sadly. was Bart Simpson for a while, yeah. and I was Sadly, home. I, I, I I also went through that stage. <laughs> yeah, it was like yeah. What, what, what was the fucking show? I don't know. I'll, Wait, so who is? I'll think of it. Yeah, who? Right now, right yeah. now he is uh, Chris Griffin. I am Peter Griffin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so he and and, and I, my only rule is that like hey I'll I'll. I'll let you identify as whoever you want yeah. to be at home. Yeah, right. When you go to school, let them call you by their your real name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, does he did now when he calls you Peter Griffin? Does he demand a? Peter Griffin impression. A lot of times, yeah, and oh. I'm not good, and so I just really go for the base. I go, I'm, I'm Peter Griffin from Family Guy. Sundays on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> That's my all my impressions. I'll just tell you exactly. That was your, well, yeah. Peter well, doing a promo for his own show. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just me. That's yeah. how you know who I am. <laughs> hey, I'm on Fox. I live in uh, Rhode Island. <laughs> <laughs> we had. It, it's funny you say that. We had. Dana Carvey sitting in that chair, and he said the secret to an impression is just to announce who you are, and then people kind of go, okay, I get it. Like, he goes, watch this. He goes, I'm Glenn Close. Do you know if that's a good Glenn Close impression? Yeah, no. Spot no, on, though. you don't know. So you're yeah, like, I, I guess that's a good Glenn Close I'm impression. I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. It's me, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Pretty much all your impressions yeah. sound like Shannon Sharp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. love Shannon Sharp. Yeah. We go to the same same manicurist. Do you really? What? Mm-hmm. That was a random poll. 
Does, is he there? Does he just get in the manicure when you when, when you walk in? No, because she does. It's like a single room where you go one at a time, and it's not crazy. It's not yeah, okay. sexual. If you, <laughs> okay, this isn't like a Robert Kraft situation. No, no. Like, okay, isn't that but, where our heads go? Even for a manicure, I was like, solo room, huh? <laughs> they getting every cuticle. But I just seen because she posts about her clients on Instagram. Oh, cool. And, stuff, and she get, he gave her a shout out on uh, on the show. That's and awesome. Like, cool. Yeah, I go to the same. I go, I go there too. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel good. Yeah. It makes you know you, you're getting it uh, done at the right place. Yeah. What is it about that whole experience? Because I know, I want to say in the last maybe five years, you've been outspoken about like doing things like that, right? To take care of yourself. Yeah. Well, I mean, treating I, yourself mentality. It's just been more of a about embracing who I, who I am and not like I just think in. in just turning up what I've always been about, but kind of was like, oh, regular guys don't talk about this, so I'm mm -hmm. not, you know, it's regular straight, straight men don't go like, oh, I love getting manicures and pedicures yeah. and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I do. I'm going to talk about it. It's yeah. fun and it's good. And, and, and mostly it's fun because it attracts women. So. <laughs> <laughs> They surprisingly are into if you take care of yourself. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't. I was like, oh yeah, I care more about shit about women than guys. 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? You're absolutely right. I could tell my wife that she is beautiful a million times, but nothing will make her happier than I go, hey babe, do you want to go get a manicure together? And she's like, oh, my dream man. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. That you're like, oh, that's all I had to do. Yeah, it's a great just, time. Just do that. Oh, okay. What's crazy now is that uh, my girlfriend, she doesn't even like getting manicures and pedicures. No, she doesn't like people touching her, touching on her. So oh, now, really? so now, so now it's so just you're solo. Her. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, you let's said go. we could get a manicure together. Uh, I'm going by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can you talk about what job you just came from? Uh, yeah, I think so. I okay. just came. I mean, at least I don't. Well, probably not. Okay, but I'll tell you who was there. Okay. I love that. Fun. Danny DeVito was there. What? Yeah. So I'm not even your first midget of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! You went DeVito to Williams. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Wait a second. Wow. That's unbelievable. You know what? He truly has one of the. I don't know why he hasn't done more voiceover work, and I know he has done plenty, but like. Do you, you know that he was the boss in Space Jam, right? I did not know that. I did not know the, that. The 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 like boss of the monsters. You know so yeah, much yeah, about yeah. Space Jam. Think about it. I mean, like, well, I mean, why wouldn't you? It's one of the greatest cinematic f f films of all time. But whatever. <laughs> this is how it. I knew I wanted to like be a voice of cartoons at some point too, because I remember seeing that movie and like obviously like you got Jordan, you got Murray, you got Bugs, you got Wayne Knight making a great you know cameo appearance. But I remember that voice being so distinct and incredible, and I was like, who is that? And then I realized it's the Penguin. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. What was he like? He was very intense and like an older gentleman and all about his business, but he was very helpful. He um, fed me some alts and lines and wow. stuff. And so I, and you, of course, you, you take them. Yeah. <laughs> you don't go, no, I got it. <laughs> yeah. Danny. Danny DeVito. <laughs> I yeah. got on the alts. it, dog. Yeah. But it's also a little intimidating because I usually, I prefer to do um, voiceover in the room by myself because I find I sure. can get easier for me to get in the character and I don't have other people being like. You don't have to do group sessions. Yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. like to do a lot of alts. I like to, to, like play around yeah. and stuff and sometimes and my voice has a big range and a lot of times they want it up, up here or you know or something you know they like they like the lighter side of my voice yeah and and naturally wants to go is here, that so know? is that like for trolls yeah you have to go a little higher yeah for troll you know is you all only voices I do is me sped up and energized <laughs> or me thoughtful and reflective. Uh, you never got to do like a really deep funches like bassy. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. That's See, that's, that's what. And I'm, then sometimes they have me do one where I go, hey, hey, like this. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. That's weird. Yeah. Now, uh, on your IMDb page, it says that you either you are about to do or you just did a voice uh, for the Harley Quinn TV show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it, like, were you a Batman fan? Is this something that's, like, really cool for it's you? It's super cool. I mean, I'm not – um, I'm just a general nerd of most things, so mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not real obsessive about anything except for pro wrestling probably. Right. But, um, yeah, it's super cool. I mean, and it's just really funny, and it's fun to hold over my nerd friends who are comic book obsessive Yes, because they have questions, they yeah. want to know and, and stuff, and it's great. I Can you uh, – It's uh, really funny. It's a really fucking funny show. Can you say – if you're a villain or a good guy or like what your part is i'm definitely a villain for sure all right um i would tell you that i am in, um, i'm in harley's gang I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a member of her her gang um uh, <laughs> yeah i mean i play i play king shark i'll tell you that king shark yeah badass yeah it, it, so i'm a half man half shark 
<laughs> murderous, <laughs> but also, you know, very sweet person. <laughs> <laughs> that is actually the ultimate, like, because, like, having your, uh, like, the timbre of your voice, which is so sweet, but then, like, to have it be kind of like a, you know, malicious character, like, that's a great balance. Yeah. Do you see the picture of the character first, or that you... Yeah, they yeah, kind of give so, you a breakdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it, I mean, again, it's not like I'm going to change my voice. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, so you're like, wow, well, he's got abs, so maybe he'll talk like this. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah no, you're just like, like no. Hi, yeah, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, what about real sharks? What about real sharks? <laughs> Would you ever? <laughs> what segue is this? Oh, look, <laughs> Ron. Sometimes one word triggers me into a whole, just a whole different. <laughs> Would have you ever been surfing? No. Would you ever go surfing? I don't think I'd be good at it. I'd try, maybe. Do it, sharks scare you? Yes. Yeah, me too. Wow, why wouldn't they? I don't know. Who is like, no, sharks sound wonderful and nice to hang out with. Well, the people that like go swimming with sharks or that will like go in those tanks underwater and at least be around them. Like that interests me on no level. Yeah, that's a specific type of person. Right? I don't like that. Adrenaline don't junkies, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I'm like, you can't find... What in God's name are you doing right now? <laughs> I don't know. You started talking about sharks. What are you oh, you play Baby Shark. <laughs> this apparently is the song that's sweeping the nation that every parent hates. Get it, get it. You guys are going to lose a lot of listeners. <laughs> <laughs> this will never leave your head. Oh, wait a minute. My niece is worth saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's worth it just to see Ron dance to this. <laughs> oh, parents uh, are hating me right now. Why now? Is this there a is song? my escape. Yeah, that, uh, why is that song so popular? God, it's, it's catchy, catchy as, fuck. as fuck. It is, right? Yeah. How are you not just singing you it right my... now in your head? Yeah, I am. I'd roller skate <laughs> to that song. Did you ever roller What's skate? What's the difference in that song in most hip-hop today? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> if we could get a baby shark mumble rap, <laughs> that'd be solid. Baby, baby shark, baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if a guy can say <laughs> Gucci Mane like a thousand yeah. times in his song, there could be a song like Versace, Versace, yeah. Versace. Yeah. Baby shark, 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 baby shark. <laughs> baby shark, baby shark. <laughs> oh, man. Ron, you are such a happy guy. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. What does Ron Funches look like when he's upset? <laughs> what do you look like when you're mad? You laughed at me just asking that. Well, I mean, I just assume where you were going. <laughs> it's like the fact that you're like, I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> Let's go uh, deep inside, Ron Funches. The, what type? What type of anger? What do you mean? What are you asking for? So, uh, is there it, like you know, uh, you come out and someone has scratched your car and it's just like standing over it, like, yeah, I did that shit. That seems weird. Oh no. <laughs> That seems weird of them. Yeah, that they're just hanging out, <laughs> proud of it. Maybe, uh, all right, so, so someone on accident gets into a car accident with you, but it was obviously their fault, and, mm-hmm. they, uh, and they were doing something dumb. Um, I'm pretty chill about that, because I'm like, oh, work out. People will put that. Okay, so I just choose something that would make me upset. Like, me yeah. and sometimes, you know, I'll get in ar- arguments or something you know, with, with our um, significant others, and um, if I'm ever, like, really upset, I'm kind of like, I'm usually like, all right, I'm done talking to you. I'm going to leave the situation. Like, I'm just like, I, like, I don't, I don't like arguing with people. I don't really like yelling at people. Sometimes yeah. I, I can, I can raise my voice, but I try to be very conscious of it just because I, like, I grew up in a household of like, uh, where my mom was like abused and stuff. And it was mm. just like a thing where, so you're trying to be like the, the extreme opposite of that. Um, no, I'm trying. I mean, I think in some cases, yeah, yeah, like I have been, but, and again, now I gotta go therapy <laughs> because that's not helpful because yes, yeah, a lot of times super chill mm-hmm. and then I end up in a fight at a pot store in, in Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> You've gotten into <laughs> just, just a pot just store right arguments. There. Well, a guy will be a real racist to the Asian clerk and I, and that, oh, that set me off. Wow. Yeah. And, then, and then I, I tried to fight him and he was winning, but then he <laughs> gave up because I was crazy. <laughs> people succumb to crazy in pot stores yeah because absolutely. a pot store look i've seen some people get a little contentious but only because like they were just like you know too um the the clerks were frustrated because things were busy and the people were too high that were in there like the guy was just like do you guys have any weed and the person was yeah. like, dude i got people 
like to to get to, but I never understand the true combativeness that can go down. Oh, this guy was just like it was sketch. Vancouver pretty sketchy in some areas. Yeah, and and this guy was like he 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 didn't just like pot. He like a lot of different types of drugs. <laughs> and I think he was like trying to come down, and they didn't have the only like this was the one. This was before it was legal, and this and the reason why we were there. I mean, my friend Gabe um, was that this. Pot store was one of the few places that was like, oh, we just need your ID. Like, that's it. We don't need yeah, a, like, card or anything like that. And yeah. this dude didn't bring his freaking ID. That's all you need. And he, they were like, sorry. Yeah. And then he was starting all crazy and racist. Fuck. So, yeah. That That is... I guess he's like, well, you yeah. can't tell who I am, so I guess I can. I have the freedom to be racist. <laughs> <laughs> you can't check me and get my name, right? That's true. Um, do you uh, do you always know what you're going in for when you go to a pot store, or do you sometimes get overwhelmed by the choices? And uh, no, I usually know. I do research. I follow several Instagram accounts. Um, you follow pot on Instagram? Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> I follow butts, <laughs> and I follow pot, I follow wrestlers, I follow all the things I enjoy, motivational speakers, hip hop. Yeah, I guess that I guess that makes sense. Whatever you like, you can follow it on Instagram. Yeah. So yeah. So so, you're, so, so people following pizza. <laughs> So, so don't act shocked. <laughs> you ever like check your Instagram? Like, uh, what's new with Maui Wowie? Well, it's just places that have like uh, good pot. It's a place called Cookies that I really like. It's um, a pot store called Cookies. Mm-hmm. I mean, Where? That, that just seems obvious. Every, a lot of different places. The one probably closest to us is they have one on Melrose. Mm. That, and uh, it, what I like about it is that it's very high quality pot, and there's no deals at all. It's very expensive, so you feel you feel like oh, if I'm here. Buying pot, I'm making it. I'm doing. I'm not a loser by any stretch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this is high end, high price pot. You see, you, you see, Shannon Sharp next to you buying his pot there, and you're like, be there. <laughs> yeah, you're like anyone with face tattoos, but who like has money. Wiz Khalifa will be over there. Okay. Yeah. Did you smoke much pot before your special, or did you take a little sabbatical? Like, do you try when when you have like monumentous things like that? Mm-hmm. Do you try to? you know, get yourself really clean and straight or do you go, I'm going to keep like the routine that I've created for myself is working. So I don't need to adjust it too much. I feel like there's like two, two zones. Um, um, for the most part, I just try to live my life as always as I'm going to be. I bring my PlayStation on the road, so I'm just hanging out. Like, try to keep my whole life. We're just hanging out, having fun, writing jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's just always because we have to be in the, the mood to tell jokes. Yeah. You know? Right. And so I try to keep maintain that. Um, which is not always possible because you got to pay your bills and shit. But, <laughs> yeah. um, when it came to like special stuff, yeah, there's this other what I call playoff mode, like LeBron James says. Okay. When I like kind of get off Twitter a little bit, I, I stop performing high and I really kind of focus and nail in on the performance. And then it always makes me angry because I go, oh, fuck, I'm way better. So <laughs> <laughs> Ron it Funches is, gets right? activated. <laughs> Yeah, how, how much? Uh, and you weren't? Uh, do you smoke a little before you shoot, or before you like days leading up, or did you kind of take a little? Just normal, yeah. normal life. Like I smoke yeah. after, after. Really, when it comes to that, it's all like after work. You right. Know? So at night, as long as I didn't have much thing to do early in the day or whatever, and then you know I had my I had bunch of joints and it was everything you know my diet and everything so right after yeah. we shot it we went over to dick's hamburgers and yeah. smoked so a bunch good. of joints and oh my god that that is what i wanted my 10 year old birthday party to be a bunch of joints and dick's hamburgers <laughs> and if you're from seattle or uh anywhere in the northwest you know why that's special why did you pick the neptune theater ali wong did hers there segura did his there yeah it's uh, i saw blair witch project there when it was a movie theater in 2001 <laughs> I uh, mean, I just love Seattle. I love the Northwest. I started in, in Portland, but I didn't want to do like a home game, you know? Mm-hmm. I didn't want to do a thing because I felt like like there's just that, that response sometimes that you get where you're like, you're not truly judging me by the merit of my comedy. You're, you're giving, you've you heard these before and mm-hmm. you're letting me and you're like, you know, because I've toured there enough where I'm like, oh, you're, you're, you're pushing it and i think that can show yep when you're doing a special you know you, you guys are faking it a little bit oh, and gotcha. so i wanted a real response which is yeah. also why we charged tickets you know yep. i didn't do free free seats for it i did but low price tickets ten dollar tickets yeah and then we donated all, all the money to to mary's place the the shelter over there that's and, awesome and so i just thought that would be that i wanted people invested so charge mm-hmm. money for tickets yeah i wanted it close to a place that people 
could go like people from my hometown yeah. could drive there sure. but then you get the two people that really want to be there and are yeah yeah, yeah and, and I, had, I had always had good shows there and in, in, in particular before the portland scene was great when i started the portland scene was horrible you know it wasn't it isn't mm-hmm. what it was it excuse me it wasn't what it is now yeah and so the first place that really the closest place that had a good popping scene at that time was Seattle. Yeah. They had the People's Republic. Rory was over there at the time. A lot of, a lot of great people were doing the thing. Uh, Jeff Dye was, was doing a lot uh-huh. of stuff at the time. And so, and still now. And, um, so I, I went over there first. That was one of the first places that embraced me outside of my hometown. Yeah. Doing something awesome. Before my hometown. Really. Yeah. You need that kind of right. When you're starting out to have some sort of a, a home base that you feel like I mean the comedy store was that for me out here and it, and I can't imagine not having some w- when you're starting up like some area with like a number of rooms that you feel you can just go into and, and be at home yeah yeah it feels comfortable that's one of the things I needed when I moved out here was I had the, the meltdown which was the place mm-hmm. that I had already performed at several times before I moved here and so it was nice to have a place where I used to call it like this is my oasis because like the comedy store at the time wasn't that for me yeah. you know yeah. I wasn't past there at the time and anytime I did a random show there it just felt and, and we all know like the, the vibe there a few years ago it wasn't the same as right. it is now you know Absolutely. it's a little bit more open mm-hmm. um, a lot more women performing yeah. a lot more younger people performing yeah and um when i went there at the time it was very bro very competitive very like and i was just like oh they just mm-hmm. not my scene yeah i won't i won't survive here and it took until i was years later and was on undateable and hanging out with, with brent and chris and stuff and going there and be like oh okay like the original room was actually really fun. This actually just kind of reminds me of Portland a little bit. Oh, for real? Like, I just have to, if I get them to just pay attention to me off my rhythm and not changing my shit up, mm-hmm. this is this is a better, harder training than being at Melt- Meltdown where they are already, you know, uh, more accustomed to liking me. Yeah, and yeah. Like, I'm not, I don't need to play to an audience that already likes me. That's great. I love it. That'll make it so that if I can sharpen it up at the comedy store, when I take it back to Meltdown, now it's, yeah. it's going to crush. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it's something that I've realized that some comics, uh, they don't do where they where they just keep performing in front of the people that already like them. And it's like, yeah, but you got to, you, you, you still have to be able to win people over. Yeah. You, well, you still have to be able to surprise people and uh, pe- people that aren't predetermined to like you. You have to be able to make them think you're funny as well. Yeah, I think the job is that you're mm-hmm. constantly introducing yourself to a bigger, bigger audience. That's the o- always ever said in my career when people are like, oh, you're doing well. I'm like, yeah, I'm just being told no now by bigger, bigger people. You know, <laughs> It's like I just meet more people now who are like, prove it to me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I thought I already proved it to this guy. <laughs> well, uh, one person who did not say no to you, who I'm insanely jealous that you got to do this, uh, Ric Flair opened your special. Yeah. That was insane. You yeah. talk, well, first of all, you talk about not smoking pot before the special or whatever, or maybe smoking less. That opening sequence, um, I highly advise watching that on pot. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's built for it. Yeah, because <laughs> you have a giant talking Ric Flair head talking to you. Yeah, it was beautiful. It, it really worked out well. Um, it just I met Rick a couple of years prior at WrestleMania, and mm-hmm. um, he was just a very sweet, nice guy. And, and – um, I showed him the video of me on at midnight on Halloween dressed up as him doing yes. jokes as him and nice. he like loved it. Oh, and so cool. like he was just kind of like, Oh, you're cool and stuff. And so then nothing, you know, I didn't talk to him for like years later. Yeah. And then I'm friends well, with this gentleman named Conrad Thompson, who, who is married to his daughter. Mm. And I came up with a sketch idea and when I was doing the thing and, and when I knew that my special wasn't going to be like streaming where people are going to pay for it and people right. are going to find it. I was like, I need to figure out, all the stops like if yeah. this is my only special what do i want and i'm like i want a wrestling entrance i want rick flair i want to do this i'm like i'll i came up with a script with my buddy gabe who i write with and then we sent it off to conrad and it just happened i, I text conrad i'm like do you think rick would be interested in this and he was like oh let me ask him i'm right next to him we're at a football game Oh, oh my god! And he got back to me like two minutes later, and he was like, "He's in." <laughs> wow! Holy now, shit. did he just did he just shoot it somewhere else? Did he just like yeah? He, go to a he room? was it was during the time where he um was coming out of that health scare that he yeah. had. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he he didn't really want to travel, and so when we originally wrote it, it he was at the theater and mm-hmm. 
like kicking the door down and <laughs> doing stuff. And then when he, we realized that he was like, hey, can, can we shoot it in Atlanta or I can't really yeah. do it. Right. Um, you adjust. Like, yeah, we go adjust. And I think the adjustment was like, oh, this is even more me. Yeah, because it's him. very mystical and very like I'm going through a little pot trip right now and a giant Ric Flair head is talking to me. <laughs> yeah. And then you, and you you came out in the robe. It was perfect. It, yeah. It, 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 it was. And and then I just saw that you were at his 70th birthday surprise party. Yeah. With like Evander Holyfield, Charles oh, that's Barkley. That's what that was. Todd all, Gurley all these, was there. Todd Gurley, uh, all the wrestlers, and, and Dennis Rodman. He, he was not very nice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you say Dennis Rodman? Oh, he, we got, was, he was okay. We got some hot Rodman talk. No, no, uh, no. He just didn't seem like he liked strangers. You stop one. <laughs> you, you stop one nuclear war, and you're like, no one can talk to him. You box out Kevin Duckworth, and all of a sudden you're some. I'm like, I'm from Chicago, man. I love you. <laughs> yeah. I love you. I had the uh, book. That, <laughs> There's that so was much. insane. Like, there were so many people there. Like, do you do you try to play it cool in those situations where yeah. you're surrounded by those people, or are you, you fan or, out, or or are you fanboying out? Uh, I mean, me, I'm like, okay, I am the least famous person here <laughs> by a thousand percent. Uh-huh. So I'm just gonna play a cut for a little bit. Yeah. But then what made it real cool is like when I went over and and you know everybody went over to kiss the ring and say hi to hi to Rick and I yeah and he was like he was like Ron. Man, you flew out all the way for this, and I was like, he re- he remembered, wow, and wow. like he was talk about him and his wife talk about they love the special, and, and and then it made me feel more relaxed. And then what was great is that everyone there was kind of fans of everyone in the room. Yeah, yeah. so everybody was taking pictures with each other. Oh, so like, that kind of opens it up to you, like, oh, cool, like Todd Gurley's taking a picture with Charles Barkley, yeah, and Charles Barkley's taking a picture with Chris Jericho, so I can so I can ask Hunter. Uh, so I can ask yeah, Triple H for thing, a photo. But to me, I just went over to talk to Rick, and then Rick yeah. was like, "Come meet Charles Barkley." <laughs> <laughs> what he said to you? Charles what? Barkley was Charles Barkley was the best, the sweetest, because Charles Barkley goes, "Hi, I'm Charles Barkley." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, man. See? I know. He did He did the impression class where he goes, you have to announce who you are, and everyone believes you. Hi, I'm Charles Barkley. Yeah, maybe he was just wearing a Charles Barkley suit. <laughs> I heard you know Danny DeVito. <laughs> yeah, people are going to think I just name drop a lot. Yeah, no way, dude. You got cool life experiences. I do want to know, you talked about in uh, Giggle Fit, which is available on Comedy Central app, Amazon, Google Play, whatever. Wherever you Check it out. want to so find good. it. Um, it's in your Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right? Yeah, you can do that. That's insane. Um, Great British Bake Off, one of the shows that you mentioned that you uh, are uh, are privy to. Yes. I've never seen it. Oh, you don't, and you, and you, don't you don't know the magic. Your material has is. enlightened me to it and yeah. gotten and you know piqued my interest. Still uh still not enough to check it out. But, uh, <laughs> but definitely enough to go like that's in my queue of things that I need to make a part of my life. Yeah. Because I do like show. chopped. I do like a lot of food network shows. Mm-hmm. And um And you like smoking pot? I do. And I look <laughs> and I've been and I studied abroad in, in England, you know? Oh man. So you I've like been around pastry, the Brits. You like pastries? Dude, I'm a big pastry guy. Ooh, this is you like porn for you. you haven't seen in a long time, like a baked Alaska or things you never even heard about because they're British. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a baked Alaska? I think it's just an old timey ice cream cake. <laughs> <laughs> but so, they, yeah, but, but I think they light it on fire at some point. I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. No, is uh, it really just a? It's a. It's. Now the great British bake like is it is it that great like what is it is it just a British bake off what, what makes it great me. what makes it great is that okay first of all they have two hosts these two women hosts who are comedians in the UK and they're just sweet and charming and they just make a lot of puns about cake and food and they just and they also ate all the food which was great they like they would come in and like when other when the judges would tear them down they'd be like i liked it and they'd eat it and stuff oh and that's so it's sweet. good and it's just like these people there's no prize money it's just really for the these are all people who like in their tiny little british towns or even in australia or other places where they're they're like i'm the best baker in my town yeah and they come over here and then they get judged by people who are really good at baking and they're mm-hmm. not like they're not mean about it. They're just really upfront. They're just like yours was flaky or it was too dry or this. Yeah. And then they and one time my favorite one is like Paul Hollywood takes a bite of this thing and he gives the guy a handshake and then the guy cries. No Why? Shit. It's just like getting validated because a Paul Hollywood handshake is a special thing. Yeah. Man. Who's Paul Hollywood? <laughs> he he do great uh, bacon. He got great name. <laughs> 
uh, I feel, he's I, one I of the. I feel like you have to be something pretty extraordinary to have your name be Paul Hollywood. Paul Hollywood, not even the best name on the show. The other host named Mary Berry. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Wait a minute. Were these names like designed the, no, for No, that's how you know they were built for this <laughs> life. <laughs> that's amazing. Is there some guy like David Vanilla? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like Robin uh, Carmel? <laughs> Mary Berry is a strawberry shortcake character. Like, that's not real. Yeah, it's for real. And that's she's amazing. Wonderful. She's Alan Almond. Woman. <laughs> she's old, but she's still like that's what it baked. She still gives you that sexually sexual vibe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was gonna say, is there anything um, about the show that gets you particularly excited about? Just in a sexual nature. Um, I mean, just, uh, yeah, depending on the season. <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, so, there's some seasons that don't really turn me on. Well, there's but, certain oh, man, items. Season well, three. Just also some, they got some beautiful bacon ladies yeah. in some yeah. of them. And so you're like, oh, you're beautiful. And and you could like just like my birthday would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, Paul Hollywood. <laughs> yeah. What, yeah. What, I, and and I and I've watched the show. Uh, my wife introduced me to the show. And uh, I, I will say this. There's a main difference between like this show and American baking shows or American cooking shows is Everything in American cooking shows is very intense. Yeah. It, it's intense music. It's yeah. Gordon Ramsay yelling at yeah. you. It's uh, there's 30 seconds and left on the fake. clock. Like yeah. I, I did one, and they yeah, were like, you did "Celebrity Chop." Your caramel's going to burn, and I was like, "No, it's not. I'm gonna get on it." And they were like, "Well, let it burn." <laughs> <laughs> But, like, it, 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 it's very intense. <laughs> British Bake Off, they let them make mistakes, and, like, there's soothing, like, there's birds chirping in the background, and it's, like, this soothing music. Yeah. And then when they do something bad, they just say something like, oh, uh, that, that wasn't very good. Yeah. And it, it's very just, like, it's very passive-aggressive. And, and it's funny, too, because they'll be in the corner, and you they'll tell you what they're doing wrong. <laughs> and, that's, and, again, my favorite, and that's, like I say in the special, is that, like, the competitors, if they finish early, they'll just go help each other. Mm. Yeah. When do you ever see that on a competitive show? Right. That's uh, yeah. crazy. On yeah. other baking shows are like dumping wasabi into into their fucking whipped cream. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, this will do it. Like, yeah, yeah. ruining the ice cream machine. Yeah. <laughs> non chopped. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and then the and then the other show that you have talked about that you want to be a part of is uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. Yeah, I love it. I can't really. Um, I want to be a hundred percent honest. I mm -hmm. wrote that joke several years ago. Oh, okay. Because now people be coming at me like Justin Martindale, yeah, other stuff, and they're like, "Who would you think about this season?" I was like, "I." I hadn't watched this season. I move around. I move around on shows. <laughs> but now everybody's like, oh, you the biggest RuPaul Drag Race fan in the world. And I'm not the biggest fan in the world. Mm -hmm. The seasons I enjoy, I really enjoy. I yeah. love I love Latrice Royale. I love, <laughs> that's who I'm about. <laughs> but I'm not like just watching Drag Race all day, every day. But I do enjoy it, and I will watch it at any time. But I just want to be up front because now people are like, Calling yeah. me out. Yeah, I, I'll. I will say this about that show: is it is amazing that they will do the interviews without the makeup on, and then you're like, oh, that's a, that's a dude. Yeah, it, it's just you know, it's a what, it's a dude, whatever. And then they put on the, all the makeup and all the things. And you're like, you're beautiful. That could have fooled me. Yeah. Like that if I see you in a bar and you're walking up to me, like, consider me fooled. And yeah, it, bravo, it good for you. <laughs> Fascinating life. Yeah. Like to me, to, to just just watch and watch and, and because again, you have to be very tough, and, and that's the thing I think people don't think about. It's like, man, if you're living that life, you gotta be tough in some manner. Yeah, mm -hmm. because somebody in, in at some point in your life has fucked with you hardcore mm -hmm. <laughs> because they didn't accept that, and you were like, "Fuck you, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna wear these pumps, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> I was just talking about this the other day um, with uh, Sandy Danto about the uh, people that like put their foot down and especially in like grade school. Like, do you remember the kids? Everyone knew the name of or still remembers the name of the the teacher bully. We deemed them like the kid that didn't like when the teacher was like, get in the hall. And they were like, you get in the hall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the mm -hmm. kid that was just like yep. that would make a joke when he left that talk shit to the teacher that just. You know, and whether they were uh, as tall as the teacher or even smaller, they just like had this like uh, certain chutzpah to them where they were just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you can kick me out of school. Guess what? I'll go to another school. You know what I'm saying? Do you remember yeah. who that was in your uh, elementary school? No, I went to a Catholic school, so they didn't really oh, okay. allow that. Oh, damn. Um, and what happened if you talk back to the teacher in Catholic you school? You got hit with a ruler in your knuckles. <laughs> 
Damn. Yeah, it was in the 90s, too. So. Did you ever get hit? Yeah. And this is before sometimes slap Sometimes they bracelets. would make the whole class get hit based off of somebody else's mistake. Oh. No way. Yeah. Oh, so wow. that's a quick way to become the most hated kid in school. Particularly. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did you ever do anything that made the whole class get hit? No, nah, I mean, I was just a real shy kid. For, mm-hmm. and just, you know, mostly just kept to myself when I was in, especially elementary and yeah. middle school. When did you start coming out of your shell? Uh, I don't know, last month. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm in therapy. <laughs> a ruler to the knuckles seems like uh, not a fun way to enjoy the rest of the day. No. Like, that's like that's not going to do permanent damage, I feel like, but it's going to definitely, uh, you know, make it tough to finish that quiz. Yeah, but, you know, one thing I've been thinking a lot about lately is that I'm really trying to go back and, like, really understand how much my mom did for me and yeah. how much hard work she put in and that she was like a single parent and like wasn't getting child support and had two kids and somehow managed to put us both through Catholic school for most of our schooling and mm-hmm. would take us to museums and take us to all these things like take us to like because in Chicago it's kind of more accessible where you can go like see a little cheaper things and I like I'm a, I was a young man I saw BB King Muddy Waters Damn I'm going shit. to the Chicago Art History Museum I'm going to all these things and at the time I'm like wow I don't, I don't care about these things yeah but like it still left an imprint on me and it um you didn't realize what you, trouble yeah and then now I'm like oh man I know like a little bit about a lot of things I don't know a lot about much yeah, but I know a little bit about a lot of things, and that's very been very very helpful for me, and it helps me feel comfortable in a lot of different situations. Sure, you, you can walk in any room. You know, you, you don't have to just be talking to a wrestling fan to have things in common. Yeah, you you can go and if someone's talking about some other topic, you're like, oh, I know a little bit about that. Yeah, I think that's w- what people like somewhat about my comedy is that like I talk about what I love and I enjoy so, well, I'll talk about wrestling I'll talk about video games but there there isn't a thing where you have to like what I like to get these jokes right and I also just talk about my son I just talk about my life I talk about dating and I talk I think there's a nice balance there yeah. or where again yeah it's just a little very um, I guess ver- versatile and also it seems like you're doing that with your career too where you're trying to do a little bit of everything I mean just in the past uh, few months, uh, like you were on Match Game, uh, you, did, you we taped episodes of To Tell the Truth together, and then uh, we're allowed to announce that we uh, we were in a dance competition show against each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I think will be airing in June. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So, like, do, do you are you doing those things because they scare you? Because they're fun? L- l- a little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both. I mm-hmm. mean, I just like to not be bored. Yeah. I like to push myself into um, areas I've never been in, uh, things mm-hmm. I think that are fun. Sometimes I won't do them again. I don't think I'll do a dancing show again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but Why? It just, I just didn't think it was – I didn't feel comfortable. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't particularly like how they judged my friend, um, mm. which, you know – to me, like, and I, I was mostly there for her because she, like, you know, she didn't really. I want to go as a team and have fun, and she's yeah. a great comedian, yeah. Blair, Blair Saki. If you guys want to follow her, um, and I was like, and I was like, well, pick a friend, and you guys can do it. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. As a, I have this day free, yeah. I'll go do it. It didn't mean much to me, yeah, you mm-hmm. know, but it meant a lot to her, yeah. and she was working her ass off. Yeah, she was and practicing yeah. it and, and practicing on our off days. I practiced the day we went in, <laughs> chose the <laughs> easiest choreography that I could pick, was going against you guys. And I was like, oh, you're not gonna be a dwarf in the dance competition. <laughs> I'm mailing this shit in. You know what? I did read that on my fortune cookie two weeks ago, which was very ironic that they gave that one to me. That was like, you're never going to be a dwarf. In a d- I know this already. Yeah. Why? Uh, and then doing uh, like like doing match game with that with uh, out with uh, Alec Baldwin. Was there um, was there other celebrities on your panel that you really oh, yeah. liked interacting with? Um, there's just cool people that I never met before. Like mm-hmm. I, I really wanted to meet Kevin Smith, and he was real cool. And yeah, you guys um, could talk about weed for like yeah. not nine hours together. Well, my favorite part is that they brought out uh, Alec Baldwin's baby, and everybody went to go say hi to the baby except for me and Kevin. And I, and then we looked back at each other, and we were like, "Yeah, we've seen babies before." And I was like, yeah, man, "I like you." That's amazing. I don't know this baby. <laughs> I'm just gonna go over to it because it's a baby. <laughs> First of all, it's new. You don't want that many people in front of a new baby. No, you can jam them up. Yeah, I don't. I know the rules. Yeah, 
<laughs> How do you know this baby wants to be accosted by strangers? Yeah. Maybe yeah. wants some some baby space. Exactly. <laughs> baby likes two people right now. Yeah. <laughs> Third, if you count that baby shark. <laughs> 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 the lyricist, <laughs> sure. Um, when uh, when did it uh, the podcast uh, getting better? Which, by the way, just had it on Danny Woodburn. Um, yeah, we have to talk about that, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Oh, we. <laughs> <laughs> Do you yeah. want to be first? <laughs> I want to be first dwarf. I always want to be first dwarf. Oh, well, you could be second. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. And, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Dan, uh, Danny Woodburn was in a lot of Seinfeld episodes. Yeah, he played Mickey uh, on Seinfeld. Yeah. Um, he, well, how I knew him was that we were. He was in the first show that I was ever casted in. I was in his Disney uh, nice. kid show called Crash and Bernstein was me and Danny and a bunch of puppets and kids. And he That sound first of all, why is the show not in the air? Where can I go watch the show now? It was pretty good. Andy Kindler was in some episodes. Mary what? Birdsong. It had some really fun comedy people in it. Yeah. And it, it was great for me because I uh, I basically played a, a guy from Portland who ran a newsstand and and in my head, he also sold weed there. Because how else are you keeping a new stand alive? <laughs> <laughs> On a kid's show. So, yeah. yeah, a little double entendre. Sure. Yeah. And it was great. And it's fun. I didn't know anything about acting. I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. acting. And Danny was kind enough to see that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and go, come here, kid. Let me let me teach you some things. Let me tell you some things. And um, and we've just kind of stayed in touch through then. And that's kind of what my whole podcast is about is just talking to people who either inspired me or, or um, that I like from afar yeah. or, mm -hmm. or new friends that I want to meet. And um, we just talk about their process and talk about how um, what their goals are and what what they what they do to reach where they are and what what happened when you get there you know that was one of my favorite conversations talking to uh, Emily Gordon who who yeah. wrote the Big Sick and with yeah. Kamel and talking to them about what 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 it felt like afterwards and what what what's the pressure now to to try to follow sure. that up and because they gotta they gotta come up with a new project now yeah so just all these questions that I kind of have about things and because there's a thing that I learned that I started noticing on Twitter from me was that. People already were like super supportive of me, like especially when like they knew I was poor, they knew about my son, they knew about all these things, and they were like, you, well, you can make it, you can do it, you can do it. And then I could get a, one thing, and it's like a little less people, and, mm. you know, new people who know me, but less people being like rah rah rah, you can do it. They're like, oh, you did it, you yeah. know. Yeah. And then I, and then it kind of shows me like there's this wall where people think between being successful and being unsuccessful are, are like that some people have it and some people don't and i don't think that there is i think that there's this path that we all follow you know they may have different branches but we mm -hmm. all follow this path and, and so i want my whole thing was like i want to talk to more talented people and, and learn about their path not only their paths but also like what keeps them motivated and moving forward today and, and that's pretty much what it's about just about getting better and it uh that's so great man and that that is such a uh, amazing thing to focus on because like you know I, I try to be cognizant of this all the time of like finding ways to like get inspired and like it's such a you know to see a movie or see a, a stand-up show or like hear something or read something to where you truly get like creatively inspired like those moments are few and far between right you're not getting inspired truly like every day yeah. so to like to find that thing to really like you know dig inside yourself to to take things up a notch or to and not just do what you're what you've been doing and be like oh the routine of what i'm doing is enough but yeah. like how can i really take what i'm doing and elevate it all so that like this whole week gets better and yeah. not just um well even starting a podcast was kind of like that because yeah. i was in my head going oh everybody's got a podcast and i don't want to mm -hmm. start a podcast and then i it kind of just struck me that i was like like what if you said that about Twitter? Like, you yeah. know, like this or is Twitch just, or any of the things that you've like, done. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's just a tool. And if there's a Avenue that I want to talk about, then, then why not? Yeah. And it's been the blessing because now I've had like, and also I'm inviting these people into my home yeah. and into mm -hmm. my office as well, where I work. So I'm like, I'm bringing in all these talented, brilliant people who are leaving some type of energy behind in my office because we're just talking Whoa. about their things. Yeah, and I'm go. just ha meeting people like Bobby Moynihan and all these like. Hey, you guys are great. Yeah, it's just awesome show, and it's still 
funny and, and like I was hoping it was your office because uh, if because so, you do clips and 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 if people look at it, yeah, there's a lot of wrestling action figures in the background. So I thought, oh god, I hope that's his house. Yeah, <laughs> my office. You come to my show. My mom usually makes you a cup of coffee and, and you, you come up and hang out in my office. We talk for about an hour, hour and a half, and then uh, you go about your day. It's fun. And it's great. I mean, you know, and I've been lucky because I have access to some great people. Like, um, just for me, it's great. Like, I have Bill Bill Lawrence, and whether you know who he is or not, you know, oh, man. Yeah. you're like, this is a guy who has made over $100 million talking to me for an hour and a half about his process and how he does things. He's already right. done the episode? Yeah. Is it, it's already out? Yep. Oh, my God. I got to go back and listen to that. Tell people who Bill Lawrence is for those of them who don't know. Uh, Bill Lawrence, he, he created Scrubs. He created the show Cougar Town. He created Spin, Spin City. City. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wrote on Boy Meets World. He created a sh- cartoon that I love called Clone High. Um, undateable yeah created undateable but people don't like that one as much <laughs> <laughs> well, those <laughs> people are wrong but actually, that's i'll be not honest true. that's people my favorite people still talk about it of course yeah. they do like, dude that's like and i've done other shows that have been canceled and stuff that people do not talk about mm-hmm. so like i and to me i'm i love bill man i think he has great he has a great eye for talent he's a giving dude he taught me a lot he let me like argue with him about jokes and stuff when this is my when you guys were taping yeah wow like if i didn't like a joke he'd hear me out and like it didn't always change but by the end of it i knew why the joke existed mm. and a lot of times doing these jokes and i'm like this joke is just are you especially you know as, as a as a um non-threatening black man um sometimes Writers will give you these jokes where it's just white writers who want to say racist things. No and they way. Will put it through a black character. And give me an not, example. Yeah. Or have you? Oh, I mean, it's not it's never nothing with Bill. Yeah. Okay. But okay. like sometimes there'll be these jokes that were racial based where I go like, mm, this is kind of boring to me. Or yeah. can you explain to me what the deal is? Sure. And he would. And but there's been other ones where it was just more of an audition. I can't even recall the script, but there was there was like yeah. every freaking joke in here mm-hmm. is about like it was like me walking around going being afraid to be in like a city because i'm like oh i'm gonna just drug dealers here and stuff like that and I, some okay. joke about there being like oh we should go hang out in front of the abortion clinic and try to buy drugs it was it was <laughs> Jesus. super like it was blatant yeah you know how do you react when something happens like that are you are pass yeah <laughs> yeah there you go but back in, you know and that's just fortunate now and i think that's that's one of the reasons why i'll never want to besides the fact that i love it most is mm. that i never want to quit stand up because i never want to have to you know i don't want to have to do that joke because right. i need to feed my son right and you're like no i got stand up so I'll, yeah. I'll always have that thing that i can always fall back on that is a great point like can you imagine like people that are just actors that like if they have like they're doing i mean maybe it is it just becomes a job like that where you're like this is the only thing i am relying on for work and like i gotta say these words and whether i think these jokes are funny or not or i like this script i just need to do this and like it could be soul crushing and not creatively fulfilling, but like this is what I have to do to, yeah. to to get my income. And it's yeah. like, you know, to to not have an outlet outside of that. And maybe that's why you know there's actors that yeah. start bands. Like maybe that's why Kevin I Bacon started the Kevin Bacon the band. You, know? outside of it. you have to have something because I and I've had to do it like on some things where I do a reoccurring thing or whatever mm-hmm. or like a one time thing and I didn't know. Yeah. Or you know, or it's just really, really good money. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'll go try it out. Let's go <laughs> yeah. see. And then you learn and then I go but I think that's the thing I go in and I can see it and I go, Oh, I don't I the money isn't my motivation here. It's great. It's it's wonderful and I and I love it. But if I'm not having fun to me it's just the same as me working at a bank. Or, or something yeah. like I don't my I like being challenged I like pushing myself I like feeling funny and I, w- I remember I was doing this one show where I was just leaving every day and I would call my girlfriend and I'd just be like I don't they said I did a good job but like I don't know like I'm not mm-hmm. sure I, I didn't laugh mm. you know Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. And but also big on you for Was that Alec Baldwin's baby? <laughs> <laughs> Tough audience that baby. Tough audience. He did not make you feel fulfilled. No. <laughs> is there is there a part you want to play or there's like, you know, something that's like you said challenging like like um, you know like a um a, a role that might you know require you to to get into like rock type shape or uh, <laughs> or or learn an instrument, you know what I'm saying? Like 
like do what Bradley Cooper did and become the greatest singer of all time. <laughs> and if you can notice the sarcasm in my voice. That's so funny. <laughs> no, but he, he did a great job. You're just mad because you sing well. <laughs> What's that? You just mad because you can sing really well. I can't sing like Bradley Cooper. Yeah, but it's different tones. <laughs> you right. can't rock out like you. Dude, I love you, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I, like, I, I, you make some sort of Ron affirmation device. Like, a, like The Rock has the Rock app where he where where he will yell at you and like. Does he really motivate you? Yeah. Oh, where's yeah. the Ron app? Yeah, where's the Ron app where it's, uh, it's just um, catchphrases? Do it with yeah. my podcast where okay, I do because we do a little affirmations and start where I do general ones where I'm like, hey guys, I hope you're feeling great. I hope you're feeling strong. You're wonderful. You're beautiful. If your enemies that are against you, it's just because they're jealous and they don't know the real you. I do that like at the beginning of That's my podcast. I'm feeling right. better already. Yeah. And then, like, Can that now, be my ringtone? Sure. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> it's your ringtone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's you, you, you have you have and I'm sure you're aware of your voice in terms of how people react when they're around you because because you could see their faces when they when they li when they light up when you talk or when you see them. Yeah, especially if they I can. It was always when I first started headlining when you yeah. go into rooms where they've never seen me before mm -hmm. and I can tell where an audience that hadn't seen me when I go out and I just say hi and they're like laughing. <laughs> and it's just I'm like oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna be a, this is gonna be easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you uh, did did you ever encounter a situation doing stand up where you started talking on stage and someone in the audience was upset that you didn't sound like they thought you should sound like? Uh, not on stage in the, yeah. in the voiceover. Like when oh, I first started doing voiceover, where they didn't really. I think they didn't have any real on me or anything yeah so i went and i did this one and it's same similar racial thing where they were just like <laughs> even like could you make it sound more black <laughs> <laughs> wow and i yeah. was like oh and i just go i go oh did you you got the wrong guy <laughs> <laughs> i get that note a lot too <laughs> god if i ever go to a voice audition they're like can you dwarf it up a little bit <laughs> yeah okay so about that. yeah <laughs> yeah, so you can yeah. Adjust. yeah that's it <laughs> Wow, Which, okay, I should have done it. I <laughs> I hey, hey, I'm black, y'all. <laughs> Sold, yeah. yeah. You got By the, the way, uh, that wasn't wrong. That was me doing that voice. <laughs> 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 Wait, so is there like a, a, a dream or a, a role that you think? Yeah, I mean, my my biggest dream right now is that I just I want to do a show about my son and yeah. raising mm -hmm. a son with autism. I want to be, so I guess that is just like being a lead and yeah. having to carry more emotional weight. Yeah, you know, because I think people don't know me as a, as that as much, but I know I'm capable of it because I I do it in acting class. Yep. I do it in, in yeah. other places. Doing so your stand up, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I do it. You're in my vulnerable stand in your stand up, man. You can see like that's it. again with your special giggle fit. It's like when I'm when I was watching, it, I was like, yeah, like this is you get. It's why Ray Romano. It's why these guys that were such prolific stand ups got shows based on their act because you could tell their sensibility from watching them on stage and you exude the same qualities. Thank you very yeah. much. That is a beautiful compliment. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and, and I mean, and you want, and you look at shows now and it's not unprecedented to have someone with autism on TV. There's yeah. multiple shows now. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 but there, the, but the, that's why I wanted to do a comedy. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, you know, there's all these like, yeah, woe is me or like, I'm, right. a, I'm, a, I'm a magical doctor. <laughs> but like, yeah, I mean, please do not make fun of Doogie Howser on this podcast. <laughs> that's not <laughs> the one. I think what, Not uh, even I mean doctor? I'm no yeah, yeah. no dissing I like that I uh, actually Freddie Highmore is super cool sure and, oh, you um, know him yeah yeah we he, we did a show together on Taskmaster on whoa wow. that guy made me cry so much in Finding Neverland I can see he's great actor great actor he's a yeah. great, great kid actor. actors that are that good blow my mind yeah you know what I'm saying because there's a lot of shitty ones yeah <laughs> you go back to your old Disney days when you're like yeah. you know like kid actors that are good people blow yes my mind. yeah. That's uh, true. But he's like, uh, like, where do you get that? I don't know, like skill set or discipline as a kid to just be, and then to have it like translate as you get older to like still have that childlike, you know, you don't have those actor concerns that you mm -hmm. develop as an adult. Mm -hmm. Did he give you advice? No, not much. We yeah, just hung out, did task, and then talk trash. It was great. That's dope. <laughs> um, and then other than that, like, I really have always been into like um, Billy Crystal, Ben Stiller, yeah. like. Um, um, 
Rick Moranis type roles. Whoa. Like to me, like if I could remake a movie like Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Oh my god, or something like that, where I'm just like the really fun, quirky dad. Sure, yeah. but we need, you, but we need you to black it up, Ron. If you, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, dude, the fun, quirky dad. That's fucked, dude. That'd be amazing. I mean, they you was, as, they redid the Honeymooners with Cedric the Entertainer. They can do Honey, I Shrunk the Kids with an all-black cast. That's a great fucking idea. <laughs> Have you tried to pitch that? I haven't. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought someone else had to own it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I could go out and pitch it. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, you know this movie that was really successful. I mean, hell, they that's what they just did on The Stars Born. That movie's been made fucking four times already, and they're just like, ah, you know, that movie's really successful four times. Yeah, let's do it again. Yeah, I think it's time for a Honey I Shrunk the Kids again. Yeah, <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're you get maybe if you could get Rick back though. And then you're his neighbor, you and yeah. you sneak in and maybe like you know I find start his fucking stuff. the machine. Maybe you get high and you yeah. start fucking with the machine. Yeah, <laughs> honey, I done fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the tagline. If we can somehow get that on TV for the trailer, that movie's making a hundred million dollars. <laughs> honey, I done fucked up. <laughs> That would be amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> also, like, just a new age, like, you know, the adventures they went on in that movie, even yeah. just the original, like, yeah, in the I, lawn. Yeah, I miss just movies like yeah. that. Yeah. We don't really get movies like that that are just kind of, like, fun. Like, the closest ones to me are more, like, cartoons, like Lego Movie, yeah. Like yeah. Spider-Verse or stuff like that, where they're, like, funny, heartfelt, but also, like, kind of quirky the whole time. Yeah, like, yeah. I, and I, I just miss those, and I think I would be good at that. But I think if they do Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, or <laughs> Honey, I Done Fucked Up, and <laughs> they have the ant come back, you have to make sure it's still that, Same like, man. the giant ant. Like, you can't have, like, a CGI ant. big aunt. old gray beard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like an ant wizard. <laughs> <laughs> you shall not pass. <laughs> yeah, because I think even people really wanted it with that movie Downsizing. People want it, Honey, yeah. I Shrunk the Kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which, by the way, no dwarves cast in a movie about making people smaller. <laughs> Make no sense to me. They, I didn't even get the gist of their money thing. It's like, they're like, oh, if we shrink you down and you get smaller things, then everything, money stretches further. I'm like, have you ever seen the price of miniatures? <laughs> I can tell you right now, that is not true. Yeah. It cost me extra for get, get, get my pants to fit me. Because okay? <laughs> I don't want no fucking cartoon characters on my pants. I, yeah. I, I want good big boy oh, pants. Oh, man, yeah. You chose that they had to lose the weight. I didn't want to <laughs> wear pants with a dog on it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, uh, you are you are the kind of guy where whenever I talk to you and whenever I see you, and this goes for everyone, whenever people interact with you, I feel like they come out of it happier. Nice. Like just seeing you makes people happy. Uh, certainly when you give people a hug, it makes them happy. And certainly when we get to t uh, talk to you for an hour, it, it makes us happier. So thank you. Thank oh. you for all your positive affirmation. Yeah, thank man. You very much. With everything going on, this, this, the timing of this one couldn't be more uh, important, you know? Yeah. 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 Get all the positivity. Yeah, I felt that in, in general. I was like, man, it'd just be nice to, to see you guys. Yeah, and man. again, really be grateful for it and be aware that it's not. Because that was the thing. Um, I went to the comedy store a couple of days afterwards, and mm -hmm. I just want to hang out, watch shows, and and, and hug people. And, yeah. Um, just really feeling the, his presence not be there and feeling the hole that it left. and Always feeling Enormous. like, oh, you. I thought this would be a constant. I thought you were a rock. I thought... Yeah. You'd be there closing it out every night for the rest of my life. Yeah, I thought that and too. And to know that, that that is not a given for any of us mm -hmm. is, you know, very motivating. Yeah. And, uh, you know, back, back in, like, school carnival days in the 50s, they had, like, kissing booths. Can you just have a Ron Funches hugging booth <laughs> where you just, like, set it up outside of, I don't know, things where, like, the DMV. You yeah. know, like, and people have been How waiting. How much you charge for a hug, though? Zero. I mean, just come to my shows. Come, to the, <laughs> come after to the meet and greet. I'm hugging lots of people. Hugging, hugging men, hugging women. Yeah. Hugging husbands and wives. Sometimes hug, wife asks for a second hug, and the husband gets a little bit weird. <laughs> Just don't bring Alec Baldwin's baby to hug. <laughs> you will not hug Stay that Stay away, Baldwin baby. Uh, Giggle Fit on, uh, on ComedyCentral.com, Amazon, Google Play, Xbox, your phone. Yeah, wherever. Wherever, PlayStation, anywhere. Anywhere that you can think of video would live mm -hmm. is available. Uh, and Getting Better, your podcast. Uh, check that out. And, uh, and you're on the road uh, 
Get yeah. them out. Yeah. Yeah. Come see me. You still digging shows. the road? Yeah. 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 Especially because now I'm trying to um, help, help my friends, you know, trying to help them do more time and, and get sharper. And I, I think. You're speaking to like bring in people with you. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I could probably bring one friend and I'm, now I'm bringing two. So that's, that's incredible. Good. That's yeah. great. Uh, it's great that you've gotten to that point and great that you're paying it forward. Yeah, and, well, uh, I mean, I got to the point. I wasted it on them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford anything because I'm helping them. <laughs> Come to his shows. He's got to afford stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Ron. Thank you. It's about last night.